I'll take you back to an alley in St. Louis, the time that quaint period when the huge middle class of America was matriculating from a school for the blind. Their eyes had failed them. Well, they had failed their eyes, and so they were having their fingers pressed forcibly down on the fiery braille alphabet of a dissolving economy. In Spain, there was revolution. Here, there was only shouting and confusion and labor disturbances, sometimes violent and otherwise peaceful cities such as Cleveland, Chicago, Detroit. That is the social background of the play. Play is memory. Be in a memory play, it is dimly lighted, it is sentimental, it's not realistic. In memory, everything seems to happen to music. That explains the fiddle in the wings. I am the narrator of the play and also a character in it. The other characters are my mother Amanda, my sister Laura, and a gentleman caller who appears in the final scenes. He's the most realistic character in the play. Being an adversary from a world we were somehow set apart from. But having a poet's weakness for symbols, I'm also using this character as a symbol, as the long delayed but always expected something we live for. Now, there is a fifth character who doesn't appear other than in a photograph hanging on the wall. When you see this grinning gentleman, please remember it's our father who left us a long time ago. He was a telephone man who fell in love with long distance. So he quit his job at the telephone company and skipped the light fantastic out of town. Last we heard from him was a picture postcard from the Pacific Coast of Mexico containing a message of only two words, hello, goodbye, and no address. 